What'd you think of this podcast, Attack of the Awesome? I loved it. It was great. Let the attack of the awesome begin. Hello and welcome to Attack of the Awesome Interviews. I'm your host, Mike, and along with me is my fellow co-host, Susie and JJ. Say hello. 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 On this interview, we are interviewing the one and only Welshy. Woo! Now, for people who don't know who I am, I'm Welshy. Bye. Bye. Welshy! That's not the best Which intro ever. You know who I am? I'm Welshy Carry On. <laughs> 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 I had a t-shirt with I'm Welshy on it. There you go. I know, I, I saw it. Shirt. Is that in case you have a bad night out? Yeah, yeah. Just like remind myself <laughs> of who I am because I'm constantly yeah. thinking. So, and then look down <laughs> to see my ch- chest and just go, oh, oh I am Welshy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I also made one traverse. So if I look at myself in the mirror, I, I can see where it is as well. <laughs> Mine wouldn't work. I've got right. a t-shirt. I got a T-shirt with a My Little Pony character on it, and uh, my character named the Blockbuster Chick. So I'd be screwed. So like, what the fuck is a pony doing on there? <laughs> Hello, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got some questions that we got from the forums on Back Out of the Glasses. So the first question is: If Freddy Krueger was appearing in your dreams, what would be the worst way you would want to die by him? Like what? What? Like get your like arms chopped off and then your face like splattered or something? Uh, first, well, uh, worst worst way. Um, well, the first thing he'd have to do is cut my hair because I I love my hair. So <laughs> if he cut my hair, that would be enough. Um, next next thing he'd have to do would be to make me watch Kill Joys one, two, and three in a row. Um, that would probably make me want to kill myself. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, to finish, well, I'm a man, so you know, work it out. What's the worst thing he could do to me? <laughs> <laughs> Cut off the wang. I said that. The worst thing doesn't have to watch in a Phyllis film that he just put out for the review. Was it a suburban film or something? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't uh, want to think about that. Death like kill joy. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's more hard yeah, for right. my way. It might have been death by twenty twelve. Shove a brick up her vagina. <laughs> No, we're not going into that. No. <laughs> She's Scottish. It's okay. Yeah, show bagpipes up there. Oh, for God's sake, with the bagpipes again every week. <laughs> how did you get introduced to that guy with the glasses, and how did you end up working on Channel Awesome to the point we're getting on the site? Like, what did you do? That's actually a really, really long story, because I, I kind of come up right from, I, I guess you could say, the the bottom. I mean, it's not, not a nice way to say it, but it's it's kind of that because I I I followed Doug when he was on YouTube, and this was like what what happened with Doug when he was on YouTube is that he he started releasing videos and then the channel got pulled down. So he would release a video and then open a new YouTube channel and put another video on that. So he had like six or seven YouTube channels. He'd link. Mm-hmm. You know, he'd favor each other and link to each other so you could find his videos through that. That's where I found him. And I found him um, after I found the Angry Video Game Nerd. So it's just like Doug right in his infancy pretty much with the Nostalgia Critic and the whole thing with the food and everything. And that's what's caught my attention with that. When he was making, this is before James did anything. This is before James replied. And then Doug, you know, he did his two rants against the nerd and nothing. And then stopped. Then all his videos disappeared off YouTube, and I just by chance uh, through James it was who found you know because James did his reply, and in James's reply he said you know go here uh, you know to check out the, the Star Critic videos, and of course some people thought you know oh, oh this is real, not thinking well why is he promoting the website? You know, so there was none of that common sense going on with some of the people. So I went to that guy's kind of classes, I found the website, loved it, all that sort of stuff. Just before anybody was really picked up, so there's no Benzai. Uh, there was no, it was it was right in its infancy, and I started a YouTube channel called the Nostalgia AVGN Fan because I was reading through some of the comments on the Nerd Rant video, and they were there, there were some comments that you know, oh, oh he's he sucks, he sucks balls, or just you know, those typical. So <laughs> <laughs> who does he think he is? He, he's not the nerd, you know. He's trying to be the nerd, all sort of stuff, you know. Uh, this guy can suck my cock, he's so gay, which you know I never understood. <laughs> Jesus. Because, Nice. If someone gave you one to suck your cock, that's ending each other too. But never mind. <laughs> you know that. 
So I started a YouTube channel to, uh, you know, promote Doug on YouTube because he was not on YouTube at this point. There was nobody uploading his videos. There was no, you know, people didn't know who he was because he wasn't as big as he is now. And that's where that came from. And so the Nostalgia VGM fan channel started up and I started posting up Nostalgia clicks that had been uploaded originally, but not the newest stuff. And then Mike Michaud got in touch with me and he said, you know, we, we've seen what you're doing. We're OK with that. Can you promote the site a bit more? So I started doing Nostalgia Critic trailers um, to, to promote the Nostalgia Critic episode of that week. And then when I took on more and more staff, I started doing trailers for individual staff members. So it was like I did a Spoonie trailer, a Mars Girl trailer, Film Brain trailer, all sort of stuff. And it really sort of, you know, snowballed from there. Then I kind of got into contact with guys at the site and like Matty Buck, Film Brain asked, well, I, I kind of suggested it about doing a title sequence for him. So every bad movie beatdown you've seen, I do the title sequence for that. that that's that's me. Yeah. Um, really? Cole got, yeah. Cole guy got in touch with me and asked me to do if I could edit for him. So I every Spinebreakers podcast, I edit all that together. Then Panda got in touch with me like a long time after that because I was still doing trailers, and he said, you know, would you like to edit for me? And that was Panda Q and A. And at this point, I'd not be in front of the camera, and um, we started doing Panda Q and A together, and we hit it off because we got we got very similar sense of humor personality sort of stuff and that was when I started to appear in front of camera and I kind of felt like I could do something in myself and then started doing the, the short and the uh, why I likes and the my problems with I submitted those and Rob was like yeah and you know Rob picked me up and then the sort of joke came out that Rob didn't actually know who was me or who was Panda so now I have Rob the monkey in my videos as sort of a bag on Rob Walker <laughs> you know who's Welsh and who's French <laughs> I, know, I, I, mean, I came up from the from you know from the back. It's like you know, just it's it's been a, 2009. I think is when I started the trailers, and I only got I only came I came on site late last year, late 2010. Absolutely love the trailers. Just I love your editing style. It's just so quick and sharp, and it's just a, so good. I'm so jealous of it. That's actually it's just to say because it's like I I love the editing side of it. When I mean when you're doing a video. It's like, you know, you script it. And this is the thing. Uh, this this really, really worked with Panda Q&A. It's just that um, we script it. So it, it, the script itself would go through like four iterations. And then when I'm editing it together, that's another iteration. Because, I mean, just because yeah. you've got a script doesn't mean you can't change. I love that. I love yeah. you know, changing stuff around. And sometimes, sometimes I'll do it just to upset Panda. Because, hey, this is this was last year um, at the E3 conference. He blew up about the fact that Nintendo were just basically, you know, rehashing or sort of, you know, there was nothing new about. You know, that's what he said. There was nothing new about that conference. And John uh, Chaos D1, the Mountain Dew guy, showed uh-huh. me this transfer of Skype with Panda just going absolutely <laughs> crazy about. You know, Panda, 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 Panda. So, and Panda Q and A episode. I just I can't. I mean, this is the thing about Panda. He'll do it for me. I contacted him. And I said, "Can you just do me a quick favor? Can you record footage of you saying I'm sad, Panda, and I approve this message, and then just going what angrily?" So he said, "Yeah, sure." <laughs> he sent it to me. He didn't know what I was doing, and then I sent him Panda Q and A, and he was streaming. So he streamed it for everybody to see. And the bit that happens is it just cuts to a commercial, and I go, um, "You know." I'm Sad Panda, and I approve this message. And then it's me going, Nintendo's D3 2010 was awesome! (laughs) (laughs) What? Eat that over a live stream. And apparently he really got angry in that live stream. (laughs) Oh, well, see you, bastard! (laughs) (laughs) But the inside of it is my my favourite part, because it's just, you can have so much fun just messing stuff around, just seeing, you know, how long you can hold a shot it's just like sometimes it's funnier if you hold a shot and then the reaction is just like really quick or it's just like back and forth really fast yeah. it's just that uh-huh. like part of the whole process and that's why I'm always I'm more comfortable being behind you know sort of like doing the behind the scenes stuff mm-hmm. but you know I, I'm sort of more comfortable in front of the camera now than I was it, it shows it really it really does show in there and I absolutely love it I'm not just yeah. to the guest on here I just think that's my honest opinion. I think you're, you've really grown um, in your on-camera appearances as well as your behind-the-scenes editing and et cetera. I just absolutely think you're awesome. Why don't we get all these Doctor Who questions? This is a Doctor Who oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, Questions about, I don't want to go. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, no. None, about, none about David Tennant. <laughs> I love David Tennant, though. 
this, 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 the funny thing is that people, I got my, even my best, even my closest friends are like, you know, you hate David Tennant. I don't hate David Tennant. I don't hate David Tennant. To be honest, I hated his exits. Yeah, that's what I hated. It's just mm-hmm. people seem to think, oh, it's like, you know, because me and Phelous chat about it all the time. It's just like you know, the, the whole thing with Phelous doing the uh, David Tennant, uh, you know, his exit and sort of thing. And so, mm-hmm. um, people say, you know, that's so much better than well, she's out. And it's just like, I don't hate David Tennant. I I, I, lo- I adored Tennant in the role. I just hated the way he left because it really hurt the show as far as I was concerned. And you know, there's, there's people who say, you know, oh, Matt's like so undoctor like It's just, have you seen Patrick Troughton as the doctor? No. I mean, Tom Baker is still the most universally adored of all the doctors. And, you know, he was there the longest. And just imagine the pressure on Peter Davison's shoulders when Tom Baker left. Um, but, yeah. but obviously, these are the people who don't watch the show uh, all that the time. They've just watched it since Eccleston. It's like banging my head against a wall just trying to get people. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't hate David Tennant. I don't. <laughs> Speaking about Doctor Who, who is your personal favourite and who's your least favourite? Doctor, I would say. Yeah, because he's my first. And uh, it's like, that was like a, 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 just a great moment for me when um, him and Tennant uh, were in the same episode together in the Time Crash episode. Because he still got it. You know, he's older, but he still got it. Yeah. And uh, least favourite? It's hard to say because they've all brought something different to it. I've got a, you know, mm-hmm. I've got to say Colin Baker. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I'm probably upset. Like, I can hear Lupa somewhere now going, Colin Baker! <laughs> 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 I can hear it from afar. <laughs> oh dear. Um, now th- this Sorry. is one of my own. This is one of my own questions I was meaning to to ask you, Welsh, because I'm I've personally never got into Doctor Who apart from seeing a few David Tennant episodes. So, yeah. what's your recommendation like for somebody who's who's never really seen it? Where should you start? Like what episode or series? Uh, well. If, if you want to, well, I'd say if you just want to start with a, a regular, just to get a, a feel for it, Blink is one of the best episodes to start with. I mean, the Doctor's hardly in it, but yeah. it's it's one, it's possibly the best episode of the of the new run. Um, oh yeah. So Steve Moffat, Steve Moffat's episode from Series Three uh, is the Weeping Angels it, and Blink. Fantastic episode. If you want to start from this new run with Matt Smith as the Doctor, Eleventh Hour is the best way to start because it's treated as like a, and again, this is a problem Thales had with it in a sort of a way, it's almost treating the whole thing like a complete reboot. So it's, uh. like, it's the ideal place to start if you want to start new because it's a new Doctor, new companion, new settings, new characters, new TARDIS, new screwdriver, new everything. And it's like <laughs> a great way to, but if you want to just sample Doctor Who, blink, it's fantastic episode because i've been meaning to get into it for a while as i said i've caught like a couple of episodes with david Tennant and i have been intrigued but i've just never really sat down and thought i'm gonna watch doctor who today and just been wanting <laughs> not an expert just somebody who's, who's in the know about doctor who to say this is these are the ones that you should watch yeah me, me so and me and i should have chat about that and uh because I, I remember because again this 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 new series of Doctor Who now series six it's been heavy on sort of like mystery and questions um, mm-hmm. with terms of it's almost it's almost, almost Americanized and sort of like you know you get a you get a question and you, you get an answer to a question but at least like ten more questions and yeah. I remember a couple of nights ago it was, like, oh, it was a couple of months ago now me Thales Nash Linkara and Panda all got into like a Twitter thing about it to the point where Twitter media had a meltdown with the, with the five of us just you know back and forth with it. and then we got into a Skype call and uh, people were like please record it please record it because it's like, you know, we weren't we were just all sort of like putting our opinions across it just it just on Twitter it just seemed like we were all arguing I, I saw that on Twitter the other day and I wondered what the hell it was about oh that's five complete just having a Doctor Who gas on it was awesome <laughs> Oh dear. It's a great place to have random arguments like that. You just, if you've not had Twitter on all day and you just flick it on and then you see all these random comments like, what the hell? Well, that's the <laughs> funny thing about uh, me and Andrew is that people tend to think we are actually arguing sometimes because we do bitch at each other a lot on Twitter. And, and we are, you know, we, we are arguing all the time. We, we never get off. <laughs> but, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's the funniest thing for me is that, um, Bayless was did a vlog of Mag first, and there's, there's a very quick shot of me and Panda, we're in our hotel room together, and we're just standing there, I, I think he's reading something I've got in my hands, but we just look so civil with each other, and it's very strange to see that, considering the every video we're in, we're always arguing, or taking shots at each other. 
<laughs> it's like if you've ever seen his forget about it, I'm always there, you know. Yeah. Put my, you put my face on a turd, and then you put the turd on Harry Potter's <laughs> penis and sort of stuff. Just, just, we're always taking shots at each other. <laughs> oh, dear. Wow. Highlander. Oh, it's yes. Highlander review. Have you seen this part of the card one? What are your thoughts on the Highlander <laughs> Franchise. <laughs> so we're just very random here. <laughs> well, she. Get used to I'm, I'm the only one that actually like stays on topic, really. <laughs> That's the, I've never watched Highlander. It's just I, I, I know Neither of it I. through Spoonie. But, Me either. Yeah, I, I know I know of it through Spoonie, and um, I know Lambert because I'm a Wakanda. That's the only you know way I know of of Highlander. It's just like Christopher Lambert from Mortal Kombat. Yeah, he's in Highlander. All oh, right. People, the only thing I know course. from Highlander is that the slogan is there can only be one, so... Yeah. Yes, I know there's a lot more. I know James Bond people... was in it. Really? Even though he oh, yeah, so he was, yeah. Uh-huh. Keep forgetting that. Even though I've never seen it, but... I got that from, um... uh, Forget about it. <coughs> Panda, Panda said um, that uh, James Bond was... No, no, actually, I, I, I think he scripted that Sean Connery was in it, and I said, you know, you should just say James Bond was in it. <laughs> 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 he was. Yeah. Just pull up Walter PPK. Well, she, um, would you be interested in doing any crossover reviews besides with anybody on the site or anybody on the site, but anybody off the site too as well? I'm doing a. Uh, have you ever heard of the reviewer? He's on YouTube at the minute. He's just a flipper. He does post on the site. He's not on the site yet. Though. Have you ever heard of Mr. Tardis reviews? Uh, I think I have. <laughs> Mr. Tardis. Is. He's, he's on YouTube. Uh, nice guy. Um, um, I'm doing a crossover with him pretty soon um, for his uh, a Boomtown episode, which is where Rose, for all you people out there who like Rose, I respect your decision. She's a <laughs> fucking bitch. <laughs> In Boomtown, she's at her absolute worst. And he got in touch and he said, um, you know, would you like to do a cameo? You know, like to do a cameo in it with him. And I said, you know, and then it sort of got to the point where I'm going to be doing a crossover with him in that. The fun thing... What's about, his name? Uh, the cross- his name is Mr. Tardis Reboot. It's all one word. He's a nice guy. Mr. Tardis. Uh, <laughs> you look it up just on YouTube, on, but. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, The fun thing about the cameo thing is that um, I've got a convention coming up pretty soon um, in London, and all the Brits are going. Um, me, what? Matt, Mike J., and Marsico, Panda's going to be there, and hopefully Ga- Guru Larry and Ashens are going to be there as well, and Happy Harry. So uh, we're going to be doing crossovers together there, and that's going to be fun, because we only live four hours apart, but we've never met. Really? That's all of us together. That's, you know, it's the combined mm-hmm. distance of me, Matt, Marsico, everybody, mm-hmm. we're four hours apart. I've met Mike once when he came down to Swansea for a, a, a gig, but mm-hmm. otherwise we've never met. It's just going to be very weird because I've met, you know, half the guys in D.C. <laughs> and I'm just stuck in the... way over four hours. <laughs> I'm stuck <laughs> up here. Like <laughs> <laughs> Scotland, you know, you're all London. When is it? <laughs> convention, it's only... Uh, hold on. Hold on. Check. <laughs> uh, it is... Oh, shit. It's only eight... And 10th of July, I'm going up there on the 8th. I'm getting my picture taken with Karen Gillen. I'm probably getting arrested at the same day. <laughs> yeah. But it's going to be fun because it's like we're all um, we're all there, uh-huh. um, which is going to be weird because I say it's going to be the first time we're, we're all going to be together. Oh, yeah, that's got right. you, over. Like, you don't go to the anniversaries, do you? No, no. Well, I wasn't invited to the uh, um, first and second ones for obvious reasons. I wasn't on site. And I wasn't invited to the third one because I'd only just kind of been picked up. I was just like uh, the guys who were invited. It goes on sort of doing figures and uh, and the fact that Doug had written this part in mind mm-hmm. um, for a lot of the characters. I, I've seen the script and all I'll say is, I mean, for the guys who don't know who Phalus is, I'm not going to spoil it, but Phalus is hilarious in this piece. <laughs> I'm going to say... I just, hope he is. Yeah, Matt, 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 Matty Buck is also brilliant in it because there's a new slant on his character, which, again, I'm not going to spoil, but Matt and Phelous steal this for me, and that's just through the script. I haven't obviously oh, seen the performances cool. yet. I just, from <laughs> from the teaser trailer, that Matt's, Matt's just my favourite from his costume alone. I think everybody on the forums has said that, and everybody I've spoken just, to just said, oh, my God, Film Breeds is the best costume ever. <laughs> have, you picked, have you picked up, though, who he is and who Luke is? 
Um, I thought that um, the map was uh, Harry Potter, but yeah. Luke, yeah. Luke, I was thinking, I don't know, Ron or something. I, I couldn't figure him out, but uh, Phil Brain well, okay. was definitely I'm Harry Potter. Not, I'm not going to, and again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I'd say look closely at both their costumes. That's all I'll say. Go back to the TV, <gasps> you get a chance, and look closely at both of their costumes. Oh, God, like, you got me intrigued in now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, my God. I'm pimping. You know, it's what, it's what I do. I like to pimp. I'm pimping all the time. Killjoy. Well, she. Review. Oh, no. <laughs> That's all right. We plug, do plug, plug all the time. Plug, plug. <laughs> That's plug, all right. Plug, plug. <laughs> Look out for my Tomorrow Night Prize <laughs> review soon, people. Anyway, there we go. <laughs> uh, hey, man, if you can okay, plug, you. I can plug, too. <laughs> My next one coming out. There's another like doctor. Question. 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 Uh, Twitter.com. <laughs> I'm following I'm you. Again. Follow me and Panda. That's the thing. Me and Panda are 20 months about this. I'm 50 followers behind him. I was 200 behind him. I'm catching him. Go follow him. <laughs> I'm going to follow you. Follow him. 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 Follow do not show up at his house and say, you told me to follow you. That, 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 that's the weird thing. I work in a, in a in retail and somebody recognized me in work. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was putting on DVD. I, I, could, I could hear a voice behind me going, ask him, ask him. And I thought it was like asking about a DVD, you know, because like, people do that all the time. They'll say, you know, have you got this DVD in or have you got the DVD? Have you got the film that was on the other night? And I was like, well, what film's that? I don't know. It was on the other night. So like, well, you know, there's a lot of films on. Sky movies. So, you know, I, I turned around. I said, is everything OK? And she said, oh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. So I went, OK. I carried on. And I just said, ask him. So I turned around and she said, are you Welshy or that guy with the glasses? And I went, yeah. She went, oh, my God, I love you. I'm you're 50. Oh, yeah. <laughs> me. Oh my god. <laughs> it's kind of freaky to get noticed, but it's it's nice at the same time. Yeah, I was gonna say it must be really cool. I oh, know it is. It's just, I went, uh, just, uh, just it's a little bit feels just a little bit strange when I'm there, you know, putting out DVDs. I'm just like in the most unflattering of positions. I'm on my knees <laughs> putting out DVDs. People come up and going, you know, do you have this in? Do you want do you have an adult movie section? Are you wealthy of that guy with the glasses? <laughs> Uh, what's your favorite episode of Doctor Who? Or least favorite too, by the way. Favorite episode of Doctor Who, Time of Angels. Least favorite episode of Doctor Who, Love and Monsters, Monsters and Love, whatever it was called. Mike, what was it called? Love and Monsters. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> Time! <laughs> Yay! Well, anyway. <laughs> that was... <laughs> I love those videos. Uh, I love the my problem with videos. Um, uh, and are we on to our next question then? Yes, and it is. Let me see. Name a terrible movie that you wish there'd be a, re- a remake for. Name a movie so ter. Name a movie so terrible you wish for a remake. Whoa! Uh, a terrible because I, I I know I've seen a oh the the granny the granny. That's the one I want to see a remake of. Yeah, have you ever... It's, it's a horror film about uh, people who uh, kill other people wearing a granny mask. Oh, I oh think I, I heard that one, yeah. My yeah, God, that's the I was, one. I was talking to the cinema snob about that when we were interviewing him. Oh, my yeah. God. That movie's so terrible, but it's so it's, good. It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. Especially when, you know, uh, this is anybody out, out there, spoilers, don't listen for the next minute, because I'm about to reveal the, the shocking ending, but apparently <laughs> three people are supposed to be this, this granny person, but they're all different heights and sizes and yeah. shapes, but the granny is always the same shape. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing the same goddamn dress, and that was just at one point to come to the ground. This is supposed to be oh. a prank. <laughs> it's, so, it's so terrible that a film I just laughed all the way through it. It's so funny. Yeah. Oh god. Oh god. And that that was driving me nuts for ages because I um I sent Brad of uh, Facebook messages about it. There's this really bad movie. There's college kids in it and there's a granny in it and I cannot for the life of me remember what it is, but you have to see it. And he said, "Oh, it's the granny." He's like, "Oh my god, that's so bad." <laughs> 
The granny mask, yes. Yeah, <laughs> but no, definitely granny, because it's, 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 it's like Killjoy, it's that film that's sort of like, I've only seen it once, but it's just, it's something I cannot get out of my head. Yeah. So you want a remake it. for it? Mm-hmm. I want a remake for it just to see if it could be done right. Because the concept is actually the concept of the story was quite fun, and it's like if it could be done. I mean, it's played straight. It's played straight. It's supposed to be a horror movie. If they could play it spoof wise or sort of fun wise, it would mm-hmm. be a great film. But they play it completely wrong. It's just like they, they play it like it's very serious, and like <laughs> Susie said, you just end up laughing all the way through it. Yeah. Who would you cast in that? Like if it was a Hollywood blockbuster movie, who would you cast in it? Oh boy! <laughs> For the lead, uh, basically anybody who could die. So Jesse Eisenberg would be one of the characters who's going to die. Uh, <laughs> uh, he kind of, you know, talk like this, you know, sort of like all the way through, and then talking these sort of really sort of short verse of speech and not really understand what he's saying, and then he just get killed. <laughs> um, and for the, for the lead, uh, oh god, who's the lead? Who's the lead? Lindsay Lohan. Yes, she can oh. be in another horror. Oh, interesting. She's not been for ages. I wonder if she's trying to be an herself now, so. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, next question. Are you a Godzilla fan? Um, no. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've I never, never seen any. I only seen. I mean, like, have you seen uh-huh. uh, James Rolfe's uh, Godzilla reviews? Because he's a big fan of them. I saw part of them and um, stuff. Uh, I saw, you know, like the, the Godzilla vs. King Kong, I think it was, something like that. Um, and I've seen Doug's review of Godzilla. That's a lot of fish. I've seen Doug's review of Godzilla. <laughs> but I <laughs> saw <laughs> the film. Um, I, I'm not, I, I never saw the film. Um, Rose it's bad. It's, right, it's, do that? It's, yeah, it's, it's so bad it's good. And it's got half the Simpsons cast in it as well, so what can go wrong there? Just a lot of fish. <laughs> oh, he's, 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 I think it's one of the best. Roland, I, I think it's one of the best Roland Emmerich films. That and Independence Day, but it is bad. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I mean, again, the thing with Independence Day is that the cast he's got in it—they're not treating it seriously. They're sort of doing it with that sort of wink at the camera. So, and that's what makes it fun. So, you know, it's a yeah. bad film. The cast make it. It's like it's another thing was that you've got tremors. I think it's another good example with tremors. Tremors, if it's played straight, would be really bad. But the cast have got this kind of wink, at, you know, sort of wink at the camera type thing, and you can just tell they're all having so much fun that yeah. it makes tremors a really enjoyable movie. That's my problem with the movie 2012 because that, in my opinion, is the worst piece of shit I've ever seen. And that's the first movie I reviewed. Plug, um, and it's just played so straight. It's just completely laughable. But I just I think it's horrendous. I hate that movie to death. Yeah, it just it doesn't it doesn't it's not fun. If yeah, you just stop. It's not funny after a while because the cast, you know, are playing it so straight. Mm-hmm. It, it's that fine line you got to walk. Just like it's like a James Bond film. It's like you know with Roger Moore and sort of stuff. But Roger Moore would you know you never really feared for him because he was sort of playing it so time in cheek. And yeah. Then, uh, and sort of Daniel Craig, where you feared for him. When he was being tortured, you know, you feared for him. There was no, you know, sort of wink at the camera there. He was terrified and in pain. Mm-hmm. You really felt for him. Any, any man any man would feel for him after what he went through with that. It's a very fine line they've got to walk. What are your thoughts on the Pirates of Caribbean on Stranger Tides movie? I liked it. Because um, it, it, it did lack the. I mean, the thing about Pirates One, Two, and Three is that they had the they had the big set pieces. Like Pirates One had the skeleton walk, Pirates Two had the uh, cage rolling and the water wheel fight, Pirates Three had the maelstrom uh, battle. Pirates Four didn't have that. I mean, it does it does feel like it lacks that big epic piece that the other ones had, and it's missing the straight man. It's like for all the flack Orlando Bloom gets, his acting and his performance. Wouldn't even think he plays a great, a great straight man, and that mm-hmm. you really saw that. You really should saw how much this that when he wasn't in four because Jack Sparrow, the character, needs that kind of character to be really effective. And she's like, the only time the film really was the, the film really sort of was gold for me was when Johnny Depp and Jeffrey Rush are together, and that just wasn't enough. They they didn't have them on screen together enough. They were they were they were in the beginning of the movie together, and they were. They did like a bit, sort of like three quarters of the way through together. And those two are fantastic 
They play off each other. So I, I, you know, I like that. You know, at the end of the day, I, it's a guilty pleasure for me. And I, same with Pirates Three. I saw Pirates Three when I was in uh, when I was in LA. Mm-hmm. I, I did a travel. Through, uh, I think it was 2007, 2008, or, either two, or 2006, 2007, whenever Pirates 3 came out. And I ended up in uh, Los, Los Angeles, Hollywood, when Pirates 3 came out. And I saw Pirates 3 in like a Ram cinema, full of screaming fans, cheering, clapping, all sorts of stuff. We don't get that over here. We don't get people no. getting that animated about films. And that really sort of made me love that film. And I know it's got its flaws. I mean, you know, I mean if you've seen the bad movie beatdown of me and... Matt doing the Pirates Caribbean thing. Oh, mm-hmm. that. yeah, that's so I, good. That one. I love, I love, I love the Pirates films, and I have my own Jack Sparrow costume, and I do wear eyeliner when I wear my Jack Sparrow costume, and I'm not gay. He's just Welsh. <laughs> he and is. That's what we do on weekends. <laughs> and right. I'm black. <laughs> well, let's not get started about, about the, the sheep shagging. We'll not get started about that at all. All right. You know. Why not? We'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> they, have website, they have a website called Business Street. They apparently thought it was an insult to refer to me as a sheep shagger. An insult! <laughs> My God, what do they know? <laughs> now, now, the big insult, oh. whilst people think it's Scottish people that are sheep shaggers, not Welsh. They keep asking me if I if uh, that's what I do on the weekends. I'm just like, it's the Welsh. Confirm <laughs> with Welshy. Dare you take a hobby? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, My hobby is so, to an animal fetish. <laughs> you turn to a furry or something. Mm. Uh, speaking of other uh, fetishes, speaking of other fetishes, Welshy, what is it about Anne Hathaway? What isn't it about her? Look at her! <laughs> Look at her! Seriously, what is it about you in there? Look at her! Look at her! Look at her! Anne Hathaway! <laughs> What's your favourite Anne Hathaway performance and keep it clean? You do realise just saying the words Anne Hathaway performance, keep it clean just opens up a whole slew of double entendres. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that's the point. <laughs> David Anne Hathaway performance. Uh, um, right. I loved um, uh, Devil Wears Prada. I loved that. Oh, yes. Um, I thought she was, I, I thought she was, you know, she was, she was completely shown up in that film. I thought she, she more than held her own. I'm looking forward to the fact that she's going to be Catwoman, which I think need sent my Twitter into a meltdown when, when she was cast, because I had like a hundred messages from people saying, you know, Anne Hathaway's Catwoman. And that's the woman. <laughs> um, so that's what I was really, really pleased about. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say, if I'm honest, Devil Wears Prada, because I think it's it's the it's the film that sort of allowed her to, you know, she she shows she can hang with the big the big dogs. I think it's like yeah. you've got um, you know you've got an actress there who could just steamroll anybody, and I mean she does steal she completely steals the film, so, but she's great in it. They've all done. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. That's, That's one of my favorite films. Really think, oh, this girl is this girl is super cute, super hot, and <laughs> oh yeah, and that's where it started. Princess <laughs> <laughs> Diaries. It'll All never the end. So good. And of course, there's Havoc for oh, obvious yeah. reasons. Have you have you yeah, seen yeah, yeah. have you seen um her film? There's one called The Passengers that she's in. That's like a really dramatic role that she does. It that is really really good. It's got a kind of sixth sense feel to it. It is really, I'd really recommend it. Wow. I'm actually getting requests from people saying they do a new Anne Hathaway movie, <laughs> which I mm-hmm. kind of think would milk the joke dry. The fact that, and it's, the thing is, the Anne Hathaway stuff only really sort of, is only a character trait when I'm uh, when I'm doing panic Q&A. Yeah, that's the you know the sort of joke that's, that that's when the uh, the the whole Anne Hathaway obsession thing really sort of. Sort of really sort of put emphasis on it because if you guys do you guys watch um the do you ever watch Panic Q and A? I do sometimes no. and I, I watched the episodes that you told me the other day with the um Daffy Duck reference. In there. <laughs> that was so funny. And then when me and Panda in bed together. Yes. <laughs> I love that. But um, episode ten of that was um we decided to have fun with it and we had like multiple cameos and like I regenerated into 
ALS and then he regenerates into Lupa. Anybody out there who hasn't seen the episode, Lupa feels her breasts in that episode. So please watch that episode just for that. All right. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> The whole, the whole joke with that, of course, with the halfway stuff is that then when Phelous regenerates, um, he puts a rose picture up. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, yeah. a new man, new, uh, you know, yes. new Welsh. She, but, and then and when Lupa's there, she puts a David Tennant picture up. So it's just like, you know, we just have all sort of fun with that. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. So, so, you know, like I'd be getting into Lupa, but then I've suddenly grown, uh, I've, ten- I've grown affection for David Tennant. Yeah. And I've grown breasts. <laughs> 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 the great thing about that was I said I said um, to Lupa the direction which is like you know you know I've regenerated into you I said play it like you're a you know basically play it like you're, you're a man with breasts so she gets you know she regenerates and she's sort of looking at herself and in the mirror and she's checking herself out and she's really attracted to herself because she's supposed to be a man and then she's just like you know I am never leave in my room again and then there's a quick show where she's just literally just checking out her body it's just like I love her for that I love her for that yeah <laughs> So we got a caller who wants to call in to ask questions. Who is it? It's a panda. No. <laughs> no, man, you're safe. <laughs> so, uh, somebody from the forums, he's known as the Hardcore Kid. Yellow. Hey, welcome hey, to the Hello. Hello. Hey, how are you guys doing? Good. How about you? Uh, working, trying to make my pay. All right, so you got questions for Welshie? Well, she isn't that the sidekick of that blimp sausage prop two purple air fork questions guy? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> you do watch Panda Q and A, good man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I, I got a, a couple of questions. First off, um, I know um, since you're a big, big fan of a, a lot of those um. Uh, British comedies, like, say, Red Dwarf, or Irish comedies, like Father Ted and such. Uh, and um, I wanted to know, uh, what other uh, co- uh, comedies are you really interested in? Like, what is your favorite one? Favorite one? Whoa. Um, Red Dwarf is probably my favorite. Um, then you've got uh, Coupling, I, I loved. Uh, if out there doesn't know, Stephen Moffat, the current head writer of Doctor Who, uh, did a uh, sitcom a couple of well a couple of years ago only 10 years ago called coupling which was really funny faulty towers without doubt one of the greatest of all time black books i'm a huge fan of black books one of the writers of father ted has worked on that as well um i have not seen the um the it crowd or the it crowd or whatever it is i i want to start getting into that because um a series four came out last year or something i really want to see um it's just like uh there's a Gavin and Stacey I I kind of liked because um, you know it's got the Welsh uh, flavour to it as well, but it's something I could never really get into because it was it was the sort of romantic sort of thing where you knew where it was going, and a kind of great. I mean, it's why I sort of fell out of love with Friends. I mean, to begin with, I really did enjoy Friends, but then the whole Ross and Rachel thing, just like oh god, get it all the way. <laughs> and uh, I liked, I like Scrubs as well. I'm a big fan of Scrubs. I did not, and I refused to watch Series 9 of Scrubs, because to me it ended on Series 8 with, uh, you know, the last, you know, JD's uh, My Last Day. That's where it ended for me. I, I will not watch Series 9, because I think that was the perfect way to end it. Oh, are you uh, looking forward to the new uh, Red Dwarf series, or season that they, I believe yes. they said they're coming out with a new uh, season still? Yeah, they're filming it this autumn, and then it's out next year. And I, I can't wait for it. I cannot wait for it. I love, yeah. I love Dwarf. It's, I'm, I'm going to be doing a video on it um, pretty soon, but I, I, uh, I love it. It's, uh, it's. I, I can watch it now. I've got the DVDs and sort of stuff, and I, I can literally just stick them on, even with the cast commentary, or just watch them anytime and just laugh at them because I just think they are so, yeah. so damn funny. Also has one of the greatest lines in the history of uh, sitcom broadcast under all known frequencies and in all known languages, including Welsh. Speaking of Red Dwarf, uh, I know Fred Charles was also the host of Robot Wars, which is like one of my favorite shows. Have you ever watched Robot Wars at all? Yeah, yeah, I can remember. I can remember. It was uh, Jenny Clarkson who hosted it first, and then he left, and uh, Craig Charles came in. I was a big fan of that. Yeah. And, uh, was it Sir Kill a Lot? Was it so the big robot? Was Sir Kill a Lot? You had Matilda. Yeah. You had Sarge. I was like, uh, oh, I loved that show. Yeah, the funny thing is, um, they, they, they still hold tournaments in the UK, but it's like, it's not technically Robot Wars, 
robots like roaming robots and robots live and and they had, and uh, one of the competitors who the guy who built Pussycat also uh, built his own Matilda with uh, the top, but instead of the chain saw on the flywheel it had like this other duster sticking out of its back which was pretty funny. <laughs> I don't know if you saw any videos of it, but I know they came out with a DVD for it that could be around somewhere. No, I never saw that, because once, um, once uh, they, stopped, they stopped broadcasting on BBC Two, and it was like, um, you know, I kind of like, sort of lost track with it as well. But, um, no, I, I was a huge fan of it when it was on. It was, a, it was a, you know, like essential viewing when it was on. And you, you had The Simpsons on, and then you had Robot Wars on. It was just like, you know, at this point, I didn't have Sky or okay. Or anything like that. So the only way I could watch The Simpsons was on BBC because uh, they were really slow. Yeah. To, terrestrial, really slow to pick up on The Simpsons. I, I think that's, yeah, that's that's probably why the show was cancelled because um, it was moved from uh, BBC to Channel Five, and I guess it didn't get a whole lot of views because I guess people didn't have Channel. channel 5, uh, yeah. A lot of people didn't have Channel Five. Yeah. No. Too bad. Uh, I mean, it's it's still. Uh, it still doesn't get very good views. I mean, they lost their big soap. You know, they had they had like a so, their soap opera. Like you know, you got oh, it's a Days of Our Lives in America. You got, you, over here, you got EastEnders and Carnation Street. Their big soap it wasn't getting views, so they had to cancel yeah. it. So they don't have now. They they just take it home and away in neighbors. Exactly. <laughs> and one last quick question: separate you from the other uh, contributors on that guy with the glasses. What makes you unique besides being Welsh? <laughs> Oh, you stole my answer. Okay. Well, at the minute, I'd, I'd say, I'd say, I'd say uh, the only thing that kind of makes me unique is the fact that I, I tend to do positive reviews. It's, um, I don't, you know, I don't, Looper does the sort of things, the, the movies that are so bad, they're good. But I kind of do films I generally do love. It's like, you know, I've just done the screen retrospective now. Um, I've done Killjoy, which is, again, it's a bad film. Uh, I do love, I, again, it's a film I love, even though it's so bad. But it's more case that I'm going to be doing. Yeah. I'm going to be kind of doing what Dina was doing before she stopped, where Dina would look at a film she loved, like she did Jaws, she did um, Nightmare on Elm Street, and, she, and I did. I did generally get in touch yeah. there and say, you know, is it okay me doing this? Because I didn't want to. If she was going to come back and start doing it again, I just like, you know, I don't want to tread on your toes. And she was like, you know, fine, go for it. But yeah, I think that that's kind of the thing. And and I think one of the things that also kind of makes me a little unique is that. I'm not afraid to. No, what's the word? Yeah, talk about things that you can't your mind? not allowed to talk. Yeah, I, I, I talk about things you're not allowed to. Well, so you you, you said like are frowned upon talking about. Um, Street. All right. Oh, I, I hope you. Uh, I hope you can continue to do well in the future. And uh, nice talking to you guys. Nice talking to you, Walshy. Yeah. Take care. Yeah. Thanks. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. All right, bye. I just muted my mic there. I was dying to reply when uh, you're talking about your favorite TV shows there. Well, she's just like, I love coupling and I love black books. But so I wanted to give you time with with um with the hardcore kids. Yes. Like, God, coupling is so good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you do you remember the episode with um? The woman that plays Carla in Coronation Street. This, sorry, this is a UK conversation now. Uh, the woman that plays Carla in Coronation Street, mm-hmm. and she was on a she was on a train, and Jeff was on there, and he pretended he had a wooden leg. He had a wooden leg, and it just got worse and worse and more out of control. And then she brought I, in someone who, you know, they thought it was gay. <laughs> I love, I love that. I love. I got too many legs. He died once he left. <laughs> <laughs> it, and it the dealt, funeral it, one. Yeah, that's the biggest problem I have with British TV. It's just like. Have you, ever, have you ever seen the show Misfits? Yes. Now, I love Misfits, and again, the the, big, the best character in that is going to be leaving, and it's just like, the problem I've got with British TV, this is the thing American shows do really well. If you've got an American show that does well, you, you get locked into like a two, three, four, five-year contract, right? so you're stuck with the show for five years no matter what. In Britain, you've got a one-year, you know, you've got a one-series contract, so the show, you know, you could release the show, which you do phenomenally well with it, but then one of the get- casts gets really successful and has to leave, and the show will fall apart because you need that cast member to make it work. Yeah, it's like it happened with my family and uh, uh, Chris Marshall left, the guy who plays Nick. Um, oh, it nearly happened with Red Dwarf when Chris Barry left. Yeah, um, it's going to happen with Misfits. I see it, and I I hate it when it happens. It's it's mm-hmm. it's a shame that British shows do it. It's like Richard Doyle in um, in Coupling, he left. Oh, I know. 
it was terrible after that, but it was the beginning of coupling. Is it's guys, uh, all American listeners. Coupling is like the UK version of Friends, but with more sex. <laughs> it's just so good. All right. All right. It is absolutely you brilliant. Check it out. <laughs> I want to go sit and watch it now. Just that that episode I was talking about, and the, they go to a funeral one time, and they can't stop giggling. All the way through it. Oh, it's just so good. And Black Books is just a circle. I love Bill Bailey. When he goes to the sperm bank and uh, Jeff's just sitting in there reading one of the books. Oh, God! <laughs> well, I got one more question to ask, um, Welshie. Yeah. Welshie, do you enjoy being on the site? Is it, like, fun uploading or is it, like, a hassle? I, well, the thing is, it's a weird thing for me. You know, I've heard, like, you know, stories and that sort of stuff. But this is my hobby. This is, like, you know, I post videos as a hobby. It's like, you know, I was talking about when you asked me about, you know, how I started and everything like that. It's it's kind of the point now where I just, I do it for fun. There's no hassle there. It's just, like, I I get to hang out with, you know, complete geeks. You know, we're all geeks at the end of the day. You know, but, you know if anybody wants to sit there and say, you know, oh, you're a geek. Well, yeah, I am. You know, big deal. But, you know, like me, Bayless, Panda, uh, I, you know him as Chaos D1, uh, the Mountain Dew guy, John. You know, we, we will have something, you know, every day we'll just have a Skype conversation with just the four of us. And it's it's so much fun just to just be around people who you can have that, you know, constant conversations with and it never gets boring or dull. I've never had a problem with the, uh, the site itself in terms of, like, uploads and everything like that. I do my video. I get it, like, ready almost like a month in advance sometimes. I schedule it and I leave it. You know, so if if I want it to be a little higher, I'll sort of double check in with the the producer, you know, not the producer, sorry, the, uh, the the upper management, and I'll say, you know, what day would be okay where I could actually get a higher spot? Because if it's like if it's like something like a five seconds, you know, uh, goes a kissing around in five seconds, I don't care where it goes. Um, but if it's like something I put a lot of effort into, I'll be like, you know, I don't want it to be bottom, so where can I schedule? And they tell me, you know, and the communication factor there is great. And Holly, um, you probably, you guys hear the name Holly? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, she showed me a, pictures of her yesterday, she, Mike. She, she's an absolute stuff. You know, you can't, she can't do enough for anybody. And, you know, and she's, she is just great in, of what she does and sort of like the, you know, the liaison for everybody. And she, I mean, I'm, I'm completely indebted to her because one day she, um, I pushed, you know, I was like, you know, because everybody who comes on first gets one top spot. And I was like, you know, when can I get my top? spot and she was like wait i can get it for you here and i was like great and you know i was on about this for a long time i was like you know i'm gonna get this top spot and she was like yeah 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 fine 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 i scheduled everything and i scheduled it on the wrong week <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh wow so, so we've literally been talking about getting this top spot for like three months and then i finally it comes to the day and it's wrong and holly god bless her went in changed everything around for me so i would still get the top spot and she didn't have to do that. Cause she could have just gone, well, he got it wrong. Forget it. But mm. she didn't. And I, I'm, I'm always going to be indebted to her for that because she just went out and you know, worked her ass off. And she does. She, I mean, they all do. But mm-hmm. um, she, is, she is pretty much our yeah. liaison as far as education goes. Yeah. I've never had a problem with it. I've never had a problem Aww. with it. And I just have... I, you know, it's, it, I think it's because it's because it's like some of the guys, they, they depend on their video views and their video count for their income. Yeah. Um, you know, like Doug, I mean, Doug, you know, Doug, Doug's videos, I, I think fail us the same. I think, you know, maybe possibly Brad Spoony, definitely. I don't. So I don't have to get a video out every week. I don't have to worry. I don't have that worry on my shoulders. And I think that helps. Right. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. It's just, it's just, you know, like, it's just, it is my hobby and it's just fun. And I just get enjoyment out of it and just like, you know, I'll just watch the film and I'll think, you know, I could, oh, I could do this. Or I could, I could. Get, I get ideas in my head of what I could do with it. And it yeah, I mean, I wouldn't trade that. It's like, I've always got that sort of mentality. Like, if it starts to get to the point where I think it's a chore, I'll stop. Because then you're not enjoying it. It's like, you know, if it gets to the point where it's just like you, you're literally pushing yourself to write this stuff and film it, and it's just like, oh, why have I got to do this? Get out. You know, don't, mm-hmm. don't. Because, you know, you're just going to end up dragging your work down, and uh, people aren't going to watch you anyway, because they can think, you know, what, you know, why, why yeah. are you doing it? It's, it's clear you don't like it. You've got to be able to enjoy it. That's yeah. the key thing. It's just, it's, it's just enjoy it. Enjoy what you're doing. It's just like, you know, exactly. it, you know it's like any set of sites. If you're going to talk smack about someone, 
you know, don't do it maliciously, do it in sort of a fun sort of way and show <laughs> you enjoying it. It's the show at the same time. It's like Doug with his videos. Some of the films that, you know, he reviews, you can tell he really likes the film. Mm-hmm. And he has to even clarify mm-hmm. stuff just to let people know, like the Sonic stuff. He loves the Sonic uh, cartoons. Oh, God, that's my favourite review. That's so good. I've got one last question for you, Welshie. This is very, very um, important. Where's the kaboom? Oh. There was there was supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom. I'm confused. I think that's that from Martian the Martian. Yeah, Marvin the Martian. Martin the Martian. Right, yeah. Oh, no, I'm with you. What about his cartoons? A bit bad. This planet in the name of Mars. Mm, isn't that lovely? <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually God. a pretty good impression. Oh, we, we were sitting chatting the other night about Looney Tunes cartoons. And just, oh, God. So good. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Got the, got the drop on you with my disintegrating pistol. And, brother, when it disintegrates, it disintegrates. Uh, what do you know? It disintegrated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right, one last question, one last question. Uh, what did you think of this podcast, Attack of the Awesome? I loved it. It was great. Just, uh, you know, three, three well, six, four guys, but uh, three guys are just like, you know, you let me talk, which is nice, because usually you've got uh, some podcasts where it's just the host dominate and uh, the guest hardly says a thing. And you talk to me, which is really nice as well. And you're familiar with my stuff. You know who I am. Oh, yes. yeah, of course. That's why we... That's why we contact people to interview. We know their stuff. That's why we interview people. Yeah. <laughs> the awesome are welcome. I just want to say for the uh, mic especially, just thank you for rearranging it so we could actually do it because there was so much hassle in actually getting this done. And yeah. We, you know, it's like I said, it was supposed to be earlier in the week and we couldn't because I was doing something and it was supposed to be a couple of weeks ago and we had to change mm-hmm. that as well. So mm-hmm. thank you for, you know, taking the time to do that because I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, welcome. All right. This has been uh, Tech of the Awesome Interviews. I'm your host, Mike, and along with me were JJ, Susie, and Welshie. Woo! <laughs> Welshie! <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 just, you, you brought me on here just to do that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.